you and your mule and your donkey. And uh, by golly, if you've got a rattlesnake coming around your parts that you need to create a brighter future, really get to their heads. Um, we'll help you do that too. My name's Dave. This is Steve Edwards. Every single week on Wednesday, we come here on Facebook and YouTube and we spend about an hour just talking mules and donkeys. There's a collection of questions uh, that customers from all over the world send in to us throughout the week and we add them to a list of questions that we get to here today. But the majority of our questions comes from you folks who are hanging out with us live. So we're so glad that you're here, uh, whether it's your first time or uh, probably your 100th. Eileen, that might be you. Uh, we're grateful that you're spending a little bit of your day with us. Uh, Steve, how has this week been treating you? Well, talking about rattlesnakes, I was uh, opening the gate to go in to put my sheep up, and a rattlesnake went off about two feet from me. <laughs> yep, but that's okay. I gave him a whole different way of looking at things called a shovel that's right he got introduced to the shovel and yes. um you know yes. what that was we met a rattlesnake the first time i was ever out there and we introduced him to a shovel too that was a interesting first experience folks let me tell you how this works uh like I said, for the next hour, we're just talking mules and donkeys. Everything and anything is on limits. Uh, as long as it pertains to mules and donkeys, and if your standards are a little bit lower, we'll talk about horses too. But the first thing we want is for you to use the comment section, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, and just say hello. Uh, give us your name, where you're watching from, and what the weather is like. Uh, Steve and I can talk to each other anytime we want. Matter of fact, towards the end of this month, we're going to be talking to each other and bringing in a guest speaker for an amazing event. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. We could talk to each other anytime we want, but this time is all about you. So uh, put your name, where you're watching from, and what the weather is like in the comment section so we can say hello, know that you're here, and uh, have a little bit of fun together. The next thing, the second thing, is that you ask any and every question that you've got. Now, we get questions, um, very rarely are there questions that we have never talked about. It still does happen, but we've been doing this for three years now. And uh, for the most part, we've answered just about any and every question that, that's come to, come up. And we've answered it a second and a third time. And we are incredibly grateful for the opportunity to do it a fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh because repetition is key. So if you've heard the answer three or four times, there might be somebody else who hasn't. And vice versa. If you've never heard the answer and you're thinking, well, maybe I don't want to answer, ask that because they, I know they've probably already talked about it another time. Ask it again, because there's people watching who have never heard the answer and those who have, they're going to hear it again from a different angle. And that repetition is key. The, the, the donkey, the mule, they need repetition, three, six, nine, 12. We need repetition as well. So ask any and every question that you've got Nothing's off limits. And then the final thing, uh, and this is real, we do these free, but the only thing we really ask of you uh, to do on our behalf is to share this broadcast with uh, folks who you know would appreciate it. So if you're on Facebook, the way you do that is in the comment section, you type the at symbol and then the name of a friend or family member or colleague who you believe would really benefit from hanging out, excuse me, hanging out with us, uh, click the share button and share it to your page and just say how much you enjoy hanging out with us and what you learned. Or if you're over on YouTube, click the like button for the video and then make sure you subscribe to the channel. That help get that helps to get our videos out in front of uh, people who may feel like there's not many people out there talking about mules and donkeys. We all here, all of us know that that's not the case. It just takes us getting in front of those folks to help them realize that they're not alone. So, Steve, what do you say we start saying hello to everyone? I'm ready. Get her down. Let's do it. All right. Uh, right here, we've got... Oh, let me get back to uh, the page. Uh, Herman's watching from sunny Arizona. Farah is watching. Says, afternoon, guys. We've got... Uh, uh, Beth watching from North Carolina, 80 degrees, central North Carolina, and sunny. Uh, Cowboy Ken from uh, Connecticut, 81 degrees and sunny. We've got Ede over on YouTube says, Hi, Steve. I missed your call today and your voicemail is full. I told him for you, Ede. We'll get that voicemail cleared out. Uh, feel free to give him another call or send a text message. That text message is uh, inbox never gets full. Linda is watching. Linda the mule servant and Theo the sweet but stubborn one-eyed mule in steamy rural central Ohio. Maybe we'll get into that a little bit later today. Lisa is watching from Tennessee, sunny and 81 degrees. 
We've got J.R. Pitts watching from Palestine, Texas. Not riding for a while, but a one quarter through my left. One by four through my leg. There we go. Oh, I hope you're doing okay. Uh, Eileen, there we go. Hey, everyone. Partly sunny. 72 degrees in Nebraska today. Jackie is watching from Placidas, New Mexico. Cool, cloudy, and a chance of rain. Uh, Eid says, I want to know, we'll get to this as our first question of the day. I want to know how to bond with my mammoth donkey since I've been away from him for a few months due to an injured foot. Also, getting a new mammoth gelding and want to know more about bonding. Steve, what do we need to know about bonding with animals new and old? Well, the best thing you got to, first thing you got to remember is you need to be the herd leader. The bonding will come along as you show leadership. And with a donkey, you show leadership through the nose. With a mule, you show leadership through the nose. What do I mean by that? I had a great phone call today, and uh, she says, I'm, I'm all excited. She says, I took a halter, and I adjusted it up the best I could, and I put it on that mule, and I did a couple bumps, and it, the, it was amazing. The mule did what I wanted to do immediately. And she said, I called my husband out, and boy, he took it and bumped and immediately got results, you know. Well, now she went and ordered my come along hitch and, and the ground communication kit. So this is what you have to think about. These mules and donkeys learn how to communicate through their nose. This is correct. This is incorrect. The biggest thing that you've got to do, folks, is you've got to remember this. Don't be like the horsemen that say, let them keep going until their feet stop. That don't work on the side of a mountain. That don't work at the Grand Canyon. Mm -mm, don't do it. That's horse thinking because a bunch of flatlanders, there you are. So let's go on. So you, you've got to take and get them to learn to stop their feet first. And that's what you do with that come along rope. So to, to teach bonding, you must be the leader. You must make them comfortable and uncomfortable. You must teach them how to ask, tell and demand. And you all have heard me talk about that. And that's exactly, you learn those five things you will learn to do this. Now, you cannot bond to a equine because you're a predator like you can a dog. You know, like, you know, my, my border collie, he, anywhere I go, he goes. And he just, as soon as I move, he moves because we're both predators. And there's a lot of respect there. Same thing, I can be at the mules. One of my clients, and, and Dave, I think you got the video I sent you to, to you of Duran. And uh, he's got a mule. He's been training on it. And that mule's following him around like a puppy dog. You ought to see that video. I mean, folks, I'm sure Dave's going to put it on the, on the website and maybe Facebook where you can see it. But it's pretty incredible. So it's interesting that you bring up this question about um, uh, herd leadership because one of the questions that we got sent in to us, I'm looking for it right now. Um, uh, this one came from... Uh, uh, Taylor. So it's kind of the same question as Eid, um, but says, I've been listening on your podcast and I have been, and I have a question about training my first mule. Um, the question is, can only one person become the herd leader for a mule or can my girlfriend also train and ride my mule with me? I just want him to respect us both, but I'm not sure if it's better to train him up with just one trader and rider or can we both participate in his training and acclimation to his new home? He's a 15-year-old John, saddle broken, previously used for rioting and packing for lion and bear hunts. He has a kind disposition and hasn't shown any real behavior issues. I've had him two weeks. I'm also interested in one of your saddles, but definitely need some help sizing. Um, not much for computers. Here's my cell phone. Um, that's what Taylor had to say. What would you say to Taylor there, Steve? Well, okay, so... Here, here's the downside. Let me just give you, let me give you an example. Yes, two of you can work with the animal as long as you're both communicating the same way. Now, here's one of the problems. If I'm walking toward my mule and I look down and then I look back up and I'm walking toward the mule, I just said when I look down and I look back up, can I be part of your herd? Because see, that's showing submission is ducking the head and licking the lips. 
Okay, that's showing submission. So uh, let me give you an example. I had one lady says, my mule only does things for me. And uh, when I go into the corral, the mule will go to me before anybody else. And in less than five minutes, Dave, I had that mule staying with me and wouldn't go with her. And the difference was how I was communicating squared shouldered, looking straight ahead, showing that I was the boss, moving in precise, precise directions. Now, I've taken other people and put them in the corral and had them in front of me and literally taken my hands and moving their bodies like this to get the mule to start picking up on her. But as soon as I stepped out from behind that person, that mule immediately focused on me because of the leadership I was showing. So I would say to you, do the majority of your foundation training first. Once that foundation training is done, then you can bring your girlfriend in or a friend in or something like that and say, now do it like this. In other words, you're gonna teach the mule, ask, tell, demand, comfortable, uncomfortable, and you're gonna do your foundation training three, six, nine, 12. So three one day, wait a, a, a four or five days and do three another, that makes six. Wait another couple more days. Remember, you do have to train every day and then wait a couple more days and then do your nine and then do your 12. Once you have a foundation, say for instance, you want to walk the mule in and out of the trailer. Well, today I'm only going to do three times. I may only get up to the door of the trailer, but I went to the trailer. I did that three times. The next day, I was able to get those three done, plus now a foot in the trailer. Did that three more times, now I made six. Got the idea? Once my foundation is set, now the mule went into the trailer, I can go in and out 12 times. Once the foundation is set for stopping, for turning, for going, things like this, then yes, bring another person in. Awesome. Thanks so much for the question, Taylor. Appreciate it. Going back to our comments, welcome everyone for hanging out with us, or thank you for hanging out with us today. Um, if you're just joining us, be sure and say hello. Put your name, where you're watching from, and what the weather's like in the comments section. Um, my name is Dave, and this is Steve Edwards, and for the next 45 minutes, we are going to be your tour guides into the theme park and mule, of mule and donkey happiness. Uh, horsey girl, Julie from Kentucky, uh, 82 degrees watching today. Beth says, I have to say how much you've changed the way I look at things. I was going through a mule sale catalog and noticed the lack of proper tack on the animals. I'm no longer impressed by the kids standing in the saddles. We are listening to you, Steve. Love hearing that, Beth. That is just, that's evidence of just the power of showing up to these events every single week and getting educated. You can now filter through and spot the issues without having to ask. That's some pretty good stuff. I'll tell you what, um, for those who don't know, when we do clinics and stuff like that, everybody knows Steve knows what he's talking about. But folks think that I know what I'm talking about. I don't. I know the answers. I don't have the understanding. And so for 10 years, 10 plus years, I've been hearing Steve say all these things. It's taken a long time. But Steve, it is getting to the point now where I can look at a picture and I can say, it looks like that mule's got a downhill hip. Or it looks like that saddle's a little far up. Or it looks like that rear cinch is a little bit too far back. And it's a pretty good feeling to hear you come back and say, hey, you, you did good right, right there. And of course, there's some refinement and stuff that I still have to learn, but it, it's a good feeling. So good for you, Beth. I love hearing that. Is that Beth Meredith? Yeah, it's Beth Merritt. Yeah, she's awesome. Yeah, she's great. Uh, Herschel's watching. We've got Kiki says, howdy from Chile, Southern Oregon. Uh, let's see here. Eileen's, Eileen's talking to Beth. She says, I really received a catalog recently and I thought the same thing. Good for you, Eileen. Tony is watching from Australia. Hey, there we go. Gone international. It's cold and dreary there today, but hopefully your smile is making it uh, nice and sunny, Tony. Uh, Linda says, question. I've heard that the carbohydrate content of pasture grass varies at certain times of the day. Is that true? What time of the day is richer? That's a great question. It's going to depend on, yeah, it's going to depend on a lot of things. It's going to depend on your moisture content. It's going to depend on the heat of the day. It's going to depend on the age of your pasture and this sort of thing. 
So the big thing I say to you, don't put them out on a pasture. You're not trying to fatten them up to put them in the freezer. Take and put them in the corral. Now, if you're going to turn them out into a pasture, put a muzzle on them or turn them out for just a short time and bring them back in. But be careful, folks. You, grass founder can happen in just a matter of one day's feeding. So be careful with that. Real quick, Steve, tell us what Founder is. You don't have to go into all of the details, but give us a real quick heads up of what Founder is and how susceptible mules and donkeys are to it. Well, if we look at the mule, we kind of get the Founder, the grass Founder from the donkey. Look at the crest of the neck, across the top of the ribs, the dock of the tail. Those are all places that are fat pockets. And that's where our sugar seems to lay on these donkeys. Well, the mule can get it too because of the donkey side. Remember, your mule has uh, a lot to do with that donkey, the bone structure, but it also has the downside, the fat pockets. And so here's the deal. That's why I don't go a wide saddle. That's why I go a narrow saddle. When I go a wider saddle, people think they gotta have wider because their animal is wider. Well, then you set the saddle up on top of those fat pockets and guess what? I have crippled one. That's how I know. Okay. I actually kicked out a rib. And it's pretty sad to see that until a chiropractor gets a hold of it. But I got pretty fortunate. But that's basically grass pounder looks like that in on a donkey. Now, and a mule. Now it can also get very, very serious in that the heat goes down into the hoof and then actually fluffs off the outside wall the protective wall, the hoof wall. And then it's your, your mule's pretty much done, okay? Your donkey's pretty much done. And the other downside is too, because of the donkey hoof, it's the worst hoof you can get, folks. It contracts really easy. You should have a wide heel on your donkeys and your mules. And the downside is as they get grass founder, then that heel starts contracting. That's why you want to keep your hooves real short on your donkeys is very, very important. Very good. Thank you, Steve. Uh, going back, <clears throat> excuse me, going back over to our comments, we've got Jerry watching from Indiana says the temperature's warming up, getting to be them riding temperatures, Jerry. Sherman Johnson from Norman, Oklahoma, 72 degrees. We've got horsey girl saying, is it possible to clean a mule's sheath without sedation or is it best left to professionals. Currently, my one-year-old mule kicks out if he is touched, thinking to hobble train to prevent the accident. Steve, what would you say about sheath, uh, sheath cleaning? She's talking about for a younger mule, maybe talk about that in older mules as well. Any and all mules, you know, the, the geldings have to have their sheath clean. They create little beans in there from dirt and things like this. So what I hobble train everything, everything. They have to learn how to keep their front feet standing in one place. Hobbles on the front legs are there for them to stand still and quiet. They are not for grazing. If you're going to graze a left front, right rear uh, hobble, which will then keep them from sco keep them scooting and be able to get them to uh, not take off on you. Now, I always, always, always like to use a scotch hobble. And one of these days, uh, I think we did a video on that in one of my clinics now that I think about it, where I picked up a back foot uh, uh, with, with, this, with this special uh, strap that I made. Uh, if not, we should do one of those. Anyway, yeah. I, a, a scotch hobble... And it's on this one bracket that I use, uh, one um, strap that I use, and you pick up the feet and then you tie a bowline around the neck and you make them hold up that foot. And you don't pull it. Here's one of the downsides is people pull them up too far. Just bring it up just enough. That's about five or six inches off the ground to start with. And by doing that, the mule will start learning to stand on three legs. And then as he progresses, once he quits pardon me, fighting and starts standing there quiet, then pick up the foot and put it down on the ground. And then a few minutes later, 
Pull it back up a little farther this time. This is where the three, six, nine, 12 works. So you pick it up a little bit farther. And then again, you've got a bowline you put around the neck and, and then that holds that foot up. So you've got the rope going from the neck down to the foot. And I use a special strap because the downside is folks, and, and it happens anyway, but it's, it's best with this one strap to pick up a foot with a rope and using it so that you can you don't have to touch the foot to pick it up and so the strap from the bowline from the neck down to the leg pull the leg up put it down pull the leg up pull it down and then when it kind of quits getting fighting pick it up about six inches off the ground and let it stand there now i'm still coming around to cleaning the sheath you have to do your homework before you do that actual process so the process is i want to clean the sheath what we have to do remember me i said make sure the feet don't move learn that the feet don't move put the come along rope on that mule as well so let's go back i get to where i can i tie up the back foot to where it's about six eight inches up off the ground all right when I do that, the other side, I pick up the foot on the right side or the off side, and I pick it up and it's holding and the mule's standing there quiet. Now, by now, I've done it 12 times, three, six, nine, 12. Now, by now, I've done it 12 times. Now, I put a glove on and I put Vaseline on that glove. And I very carefully take and run my hand up in that sheath and just run my hand around in that sheath and get that Vaseline in there, all right, and get it going. Now, sometimes with these meals, I have seen them kick me with on three legs. So you may want to think about putting another rope on the foot that's closest to where you're going to run your hand up and having some way hold that rope uh, so that it, uh, the, the, per, if the mule tries to jump up and kick, you can do it. Now, it, this is dangerous. There's nothing easy about being around a mule and donkey. It is one of the most dangerous places you can be. But when you get something like this, it can be even more danger. So do your groundwork first. Come along, hitch. Come along, hitch. Come along, hitch. I, Dave and I talk to you about it all the time. It's not important to ride. It's important to get your ground foundation correct because if you can't lead them, then why ride them? Get that in your mind. If you can't get them to stand still, why pick up their feet? And especially, folks, if you want to end up like me, see the spot right here? Right there, right? No, it's over here. There it is. Oh, I got to bring my hand over here. There. See that dent right there? Yeah. That, that dent right there, folks is from a mule. Yep, yeah. So here's the deal. Now this left eye is not working good because of that kick from that mule. And he put a pretty good dent in my head, as you can see. It wasn't Susan hitting me with a ball bat and getting me lined up, by the way. You know? contrary, to, <laughs> contrary to the rumors that are out there on the internet. Yeah, that's right. She only hits me twice a week now, twice a week. <laughs> anyway, so let's go back. So. See, I, I, you see the big picture, folks? Don't just go do it. Get the mule prepared to do it. Just like putting a bit on. Get the mule to prepare the, to put the bit in the mouth by rubbing the bars of the mouth. Get the mule prepared to, to clean the sheath. Now, if you can't pick up all four feet, you ain't cleaning the sheath. If you can't get them to stand still and quiet, you're not cleaning the sheath, okay? Get those things done first. Awesome. Thank you very much. Great question, horse girl. Uh, yeah. David Cantor's watching Port Angeles, Washington, 55 degrees. We've got Jack watching from 60 degree Johannesburg today. It's overcast. Says, hi, everyone. Uh, Tony says, I've adopted a rescue Molly mule. I would like to train her for harness. Is mule harness different from pony harvest harness? Well, it's, it's different in some ways. Um, for the most part, no, it's not that much more different. It's different when it comes down to the hames and the collar. 
That's the difference right there and how that Hames and collar fit on the neck. Um, so driving is a lot of fun, but I can also tell you it is the most dangerous part of being able to spend time with a mule or donkey. Why is that? Because you are in a cart. And I, I know of a couple of different people that have been in some serious accidents and really got themselves hurt when that cart flipped upside down and they got dragged by this mule while the mule was kicking them as they're going. So it can be pretty nasty. Do your groundwork. But yes, you can pretty much take most harness and fit it. Uh, but make sure you use a tail grouper on that harness to hold that that breaching back. Now, real quick, just so people hear you, we've talked so many times about not using a crouper. You just said to use a crouper. Yep. Okay. Picture this crouper. What's the purpose of a crouper? The purpose of a crouper is to keep harness the breaching from climbing up the hip. You put the crouper on the on the back straps right behind the the hip safe and then that keeps the breaching from going up the hip that's the reason for the crouper no other reason and it's less than three to six pounds so all i think it's for is to keep the two back straps that's hooked up to the hip safe that's hooked up to the breaching to keep the hip safe from going forward that's awesome. the purpose very good. Uh, let's see here. Herschel is watching from Williamsburg, Missouri. Cold and uh, missing, says. Hopefully you're not missing us. Uh, let's see here. Steve is watching from Delta, Colorado. 81 degrees and sunny. Good name there. Good strong name. Trace is watching from Lawnwood, Queensland, Australia. We've gone international again. Welcome, hey, Trace. Trace. Uh, Andrea's watching in North Carolina, sunny and 68 degrees. Hope you're doing good, Andrea. We've got Roger in Milan, New York, 90 and sunny. Very happy because I just opened a big box that had my new extreme ultra light saddle. Celebrate good times. Come on, everyone. Let's celebrate. Roger, if you need anything at all, you be sure to give Steve a call. And, uh, and a lot of, well, a matter of fact, what happened with Beth, if you're still watching Beth, uh, Beth gave Steve a call after she got um, after she got her saddle and says, hey, this thing is all wrong. Steve says, well, let's hop on the phone. Turns out it was all wrong, but it had nothing to do with the saddle. Putting this stuff together, if, you, if you've never done it before with Steve Edwards' tack and saddle, uh, it, it, it could benefit you to send him a text message, uh, say, hey, how does it look? Because after about 15, 20 minutes of just saying, hey, try this, do this, do this, makes a world of difference. So, Roger, let us know if you need anything. Ain't that right, Steve? Oh, you bet. Roger, he actually texted me and said, hey, my saddle's in, my box is in. I can't wait to get home to look at it, you know. So he's got one of the new ultralight extremes. Oh, that's a nice saddle. It is a nice one. Lots yeah. of people like it. Uh, Nancy's watching, 78 degrees, Mountain City, Tennessee. Got <laughs> told this week to give up on my donkey by other donkey owners because I'm not a trainer and I don't know what I'm doing. I've had a donkey for three months, yet I still cannot get him to soften or get a come-along rope on him. Only when I'm scratching or brushing him does he go soft. Forget about a rope around him. Been watching Alana on your a lot on your YouTube channel over and over and can't get close to that. How long will it take to get this come-along rope on him? I feel frustrated. Nancy, I just want to say first and foremost, I hear you. I totally feel for you as somebody who has not spent my life around this uh, industry, who has not spent my life around these animals. Like I hear that and I, I feel for you. So Steve, what type of encouragement might we be able to send out to Nancy in Tennessee? Okay, Nancy, here's what we're going to do. Got this picture. You've got your mule in a small pen. 20 by 20 is, is the biggest I want to see you in. Now you're going to take my come along rope and you're going to have the donkey be standing somewhere. And you're going to take the come along rope and throw it toward, there's my wife. Hi, honey. Everybody thinks she's, she's bending down. But oh, <laughs> I didn't see her right away. I saw you looking down cause you're seeing her on the screen. And I thought, yeah. is she like FaceTiming him or oh. what? No, she's right there. <laughs> but she got, she got down to see Jess. And uh, when she did, she thought she was sneaking by, but I could see her. 
And the camera Jess, sees all. Jess, he says, <laughs> yeah, wait, here, here, Jess, here, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. So, so Jess, Jess will let me know that mom is here. Okay, go see, go see mom. Jess, Jess, no, that's enough. Go see mom. Good boy. There we go. That's good. Yeah. So where were we? Uh, we were talking about just frustrated. Can't even get oh, okay. the Let's rope around the neck. It's been three months. Still can't get the rope around the neck. Extreme frustration. Yeah. All right. So here's what we're going to do. 20 by 20 pin. We're going to take our come along rope and we're going to have the rope, the loops on the ground back here. Don't handle a bunch of loops. You can get your wrist caught up in that a bunch of half inches and get yourself in trouble. So throw that part on the ground. Take and have about another five or six feet out here with your with your hondo. That's the end of it. And I want you to toss it toward the donkey. Toss it toward the donkey. You know, forget about TV. No more TV. Go spend the time with the donkey. Take that rope and throw it at the donkey. Throw it at the donkey. Throw it at the donkey. Okay. Now you're not desensitizing. That rope is the extension of your body. He don't know how long your arm is. She has no idea that that's a rope and not your hand. Only thing she knows is here's something's coming at her. Okay. So do this, folks. Uh, everybody that's got a mule or a donkey, sometime or another, you're in a corral. Take your rope and just start tossing it toward him, tossing it toward him, tossing it toward him. And then pretty soon, it's not hitting them, folks. It is hitting on the ground. You throw it out, and it hits on the ground. Throw it out, hits on the ground. Throw it out, hits on the ground. Now get you a few coils and throw all the coils out. Pretty soon, guess what? I'm going to tell you, if you do this, in less than an hour, that rope is going to be laying across the donkey's back. Then take that rope and toss it toward the neck, toss it toward the hip, toss it toward the neck. You see that? You just got your rope on your donkey in less than an hour. Don't listen to folks. Folks, listen. You know, I know there's a lot of experts out there in, in, in Facebook world and YouTube world and all this stuff. And, and they give you some good advice. And this is what I'm going to tell you. You've heard me say this time and time again. If it works for you, do it. But get this in your mind. If you do it three times, it's now a foundation. And they're going to think that's the way the life is. So if you're only going up and brushing and you don't go any farther, you're as far as you can go with your foundation. That's as far as you can go. Get back with your rope. Toss it toward that donkey. And in less than an hour, you'll have it. And then have fun with it. Take and once you've done this three, six, nine, twelve, okay, you throw it on its back, and it's been there once, throw it on its back twice, throw it on the back three times, and the mule is going clockwise, or the donkey's going clockwise, that's enough today. Three. Now we go back counterclockwise. Throw the rope out. When it lays on their back, that's one. Throw it out there again. It lays on the back. That's two. Throw it out there again. It lays on the back. That's three. We're done today. One of the downsides is, folks, we tend to overdo it. Oh, well, if we do it a couple times, the American way, do it a ton more. No, 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 no. You're building a foundation. Listen, there's a brain on the right. There's a brain on the left. And what that does is tell them what's natural to them. The part that is the teachable part is walnut size on the right, walnut size on the left. That's, that's, that little bit of brain is you're trying to put 15 years into that mule over the years of that donkey. All right. So three today. Next day I go do it. Not, or five days later. If your foundation is correct, you do not need to train every day. Now, the next time you go out, Three times across the back. Did good. Okay, now do it three more. Six. I'm done. Going counterclockwise and going clockwise. I'm done. And then nine and then 12. You're going to call me next week and you're going to call back on this show and say, 
looky here, show me a picture of the rope laying across the donkey. Now, here's the other thing, folks. Don't listen to folks that say, get you a companion for your meal. Nope. Don't need a companion. Don't need one. You need to be the herd leader. You need to be the companion because here's the deal. And I know you've heard me tell you this time and time again. I know folks that got a goat to try to keep their horse or their donkey or their mule as a companion. And now they can't go anywhere without that goat. It looks pretty funny going down the trail with a goat. Yeah. Okay. You got that? Okay. Uh, so if you want a companion, get them a rattlesnake. And that way you guys, they won't get close at all. I love the first thing, Nancy, I I've spent a lot of time around Steve and I've spent a lot of time um, around Steve with mules. And the first thing that he said there um, to hopefully it's encouraging to you, but throwing that rope, you can't get close, but throwing that rope out there, the, the mule, the donkey doesn't know that that's not your arm, that that's not your hand. It's, it's a foreign object. It could be a, pre it could be a snake. It could be any type of predator coming that way. Yeah. To me, that seems like I can't get close, but that right there is something that I can do. And that three, six, nine, that's fantastic. Steve, I love that. That's very helpful. Nancy, go ahead, put in the comment section there how you feel about that. If you have any follow-up questions, because we really, 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 more than anything, want you to get out there, gain the trust of your animal and get results with your training. That's what we want to see. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to share about that, Nancy. Appreciate it. Bonnie's watching from Indiana, 72 degrees, going riding tomorrow. Take some pictures. Send them in to us, Bonnie. Uh, hey there, uh, Richard Matthews, the captain, is watching. Howdy. Good afternoon, Chaplain Steve and Dave. Good afternoon, Captain. Uh, Brad is watching. Cloudy, 40 degrees in Nanton, Alberta. Uh, Alberta, we've gone international again. We've got Greg watching. Greg and Diane from St. Peter's, Missouri. Cloudy and 77 degrees. Couldn't help notice how young and healthy Steve looks. There you go, Steve. There you go. I don't care what yeah. people say about you, Steve. <laughs> Greg's right on target there. <laughs> hey, hey, I think I, I, I met somebody famous today but I can't think of what her name is. She's actually got the name of a famous movie star. And I was going to tell everybody, I actually talked to her today and I can't think of it right now to save my life. I was going to have my, she bought a, a come along hitch, but she's got a really famous name. When I saw it, I said, wow. And then when I talked to her today, I didn't have a black halter in stock, but I had a brown one. And I got to talk about the famous person she was named after, and I can't think of it. It'll come to you at 401, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way it works. Uh, JD is watching from south southeastern Idaho. We've got Ma Myra from Ojai, California. I'm finding that review with foundation work is definitely important to maintain focus and responsiveness. Your information is so useful. Myra, thank you so much. And we always say, Steve always says, that come along rope and that rope halter, they are for foundation work and tune up work. When you've got a problem, you go back to the rope halter, you go back to the come along rope and you do the tune up with those tools. That's great. Nancy's watching from Parker, South Dakota. Thanks for the information. Our pleasure, Nancy. Uh, Nathan is watching from Lexington, Kentucky. Beautiful weather. Love to hear that. Uh, Myra says, I totally agree with Beth. So I'm sure Beth had something ground. Oh, she made those comments early on about how, you know, easier looking at things now. So very good. Uh, let's see here. We've got Jackie says, so when you say three, six, nine, 12, are you saying do three good ones the first day, then wait a day or two, do three good ones next time. And then three more a few days later, I've been doing three the first day six a few days later, nine a few days later, all the way up to 12. Am I doing it wrong? Steve, you want to clarify? No, that's 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 not so bad there. Listen, folks, what we're going to do, it may take us 15 times to get three good ones. So as the mule, let's just, let's just say the mule's going around clockwise and I throw that rope out there. It may be, take me 15 times to get the first rope out there where the rope stays placed. Once I got that one there, that's one. Then I throw it out there again, that's two. Throw it out there again, that's three. On the right hand brain, 
Now we go, we go counterclockwise, where I've got the left-hand brain. 16 times this time it took me there, but I got it on. Now I got three good ones. I quit today. Now, the next time you do it, a lot of times, wow, you get those first three, the donkey, the mule just responds. Oh, good. Go ahead and get you three more. Now you got your six. But just, just try not to do it all in one day. If The best thing you can do, if you're building a foundation and it is correct, you can wait a week later. And that donkey and that mule will remember that and say, got it, got it. See, the downside is you cannot force a donkey or mule to get through this thing. They're going to they're gonna take care of themselves. Now, a horse, you can bluff them through. You ain't going to bluff a mule or a donkey because that donkey is smart. He knows not to jump over that cliff. That's right. <laughs> uh, Jerry says, uh, Jerry from Fort Benton, Montana, 55 degrees today. Snow coming this weekend. Yuck. Missed you live video last week because I was participating with my wagon and mule team in the Mile City Wild Bucking Horse Sale Wagon Train. Oh. First time on this ride and had a great oh. time and my mules are listening to me much more because I have been training with your come along ropes and halters. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Jerry. Really appreciate that. Send us pictures. If you got yeah. pictures of that, send them in. We'd love to share them on Facebook too. Let other folks see. That'd be great. Oh, wow. Wow. City Buck and Horse Sale. That's a big deal. That is, there's some, there's some, I've got several rancher friends in that country and uh, them horses can flat buck, but seeing those wagon trains come in with them mules and horses and stuff, Man, that's poetry. That'd be cool. Send some pictures. We'd love to see. Yep. Uh, Jajosi's watching over on YouTube, says, uh, watching from France. It's midnight. Thanks for hanging out with us. You're taking us international again. Uh, says, Steve, your head collar and saddle without horn is fantastic. It lays so stable on my donkey. I feel regret not having bought it four years ago. Steve, how about that? That's pretty cool to hear. She, she was very patient. You know, when she bought that saddle, she wanted it without a horn. And I went ahead and had it made, done it for her, but it does take a while because our normal thing is to build, have several that we build at one time. We usually build 12 at a time. And so she wanted it without a horn. So that took some special doing. But long story short, uh, she's really gone through a lot of pain and suffering with her mules because of she's used other saddles and things like this but now boy she sent some awesome pictures i think i sent them to you dave and she's she actually had a mule i know a donkey these kind of donkeys she had a donkey that was that just wandered in one day somebody turned it loose and it come wandering in one day it's one of her favorite donkeys that's great that's awesome uh let's see here jim is watching from old town florida uh, Tanya and Jim are watching from sunny weather, Old Town, Florida. I bought a 12 year old Molly this week and a Steve Edwards used saddle. Gonna order some other tack from Queen Valley Mule Ranch soon. Hey, let me tell you this, Jim, uh, send a picture of your saddle in. We want to make sure that people didn't make modifications to it. What we've noticed is some folks, you can find a Steve Edwards used saddle every now and again. Folks ask us if we sell them. We don't, number one, because there really isn't a whole lot that come up for sale. And number two, when they do, uh, they're still pretty, uh, they retain their value real well. So we just let the aftermarket have them. But we have noticed some folks send in, says, I got one of your saddles, saddles Steve. It's causing all sorts of issues. Steve says, well, send in a picture. And what we yeah. find is that folks modified the saddle. Steve says, I'm not going to modify it for you. I'm going to send you a Steve Edwards saddle. Once you get it, you can do whatever you want to do with it. Send a picture. We'll make sure that it is the way that it's supposed to be and make sure that you get the right tack. We'd love to, to do that for you. Uh, David is watching. David Pingelli from Sonoya, Georgia. Good to have you here, David. Always good to have you here. Drinking up with some of the coffee by David. There we go. Connie is watching from Cochise, Arizona. Hot, dry, and windy. Isn't that the case? We hear you. Uh, okay, let's see. Linda's got a long comment. I'm going to come back to that one, Linda. Mary is watching from Arkansas uh, using the come along hitch on Millie. Uh, good to hear that. We've got Hannah uh, from gorgeous Dunalon, Florida. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and expertise. 
Uh, yeah. Let's see here. We've got Ann watching from Cambridge, Ohio. 80 degrees and sunny. Perfect riding weather. Ain't that the truth? Nick says, I have a mule that has an abscess bust on the bottom of his hoof towards the toe. I've been cleaning out the spot and applying betaline solution. Is there anything else I should be doing better or be doing at all? And he's using betadine, which is which is okay. Uh, An and abscess is the mule not having any shoes on. Uh, that's one thing. Um, abscesses are caused by different ways. So you can use betadine, which is a nice way to clean it, but you can also use Clorox. Now, I can tell you one of the downsides of having one of these type of, of uh, problems with the hoof is that you've got to keep it dry. You've got to keep it dry. So one of the things, this is the rare time I'm going to tell you to ever do this because I'm not one for hoof boots. I don't, I don't like hoof boots. They shouldn't take the place of a shoe, but this is a rare time I'll tell you to do it. When you take, and, and, uh, and you've probably already carved it out a little bit so that you, you got clean uh, uh, sole, then you're going to use a little Clorox in it and let it clean out. And then you're going to take some pine tar linseed oil and you're going to pack it in there and then you're going to pull the boot over top of it and then lock it. That pine tar and linseed oil will help keep moisture in that hoof and will help that thing to be able to uh, get well quicker. Uh, abscesses uh, come from a lot of things. Most of the time, it's we're riding barefooted and they catch a rock just right. You all try it yourself. Go out there and walk barefooted and see how long it takes you before your, your foot sore. Anyway, that abscess gets hit by that stone and then creates a bruise and then we don't catch it, and then it gets bad, and your mule goes to crippling up. So there's what I would do. Pine tar and linseed oil, that does a good job of packing that in. Awesome. Very good. Thank you, Nick. Next question. This one was emailed in by Diane. She says, has a mule ever successfully been trained to not kill? I've been told that this has happened. Steve, what do you say? Well, it's natural, folks, for them to attack a predator, okay? Uh, it's, it's, that's, if they feel that they're, they're in harm's way, yes, they will protect. I've never seen a mule kill anything but my wife's colt, unfortunately, and then a calf. Uh, but that was only because, here's what happens, folks. They try to mother up to that baby, and when they do, they fight off the other ones or they try to move away from the cow so that she can't feed them and then they die. That's why I tell you, be careful with your kids around these mules and donkeys. You be careful. Put a helmet on them. Keep them close. Um, I've, I've, other than that, folks, I have ridden mules around thousands of calves, dogs, uh, sheep things like that, and, <clears throat> and never really had them try to attack one intentionally. Now, have I had a mule kick a dog because he got too close? Yes, but not try to kill it. Awesome. Great question there. Appreciate the question. Next one comes from Susan. says, I have a driving mare that I would like to have bred to a jack. She had four babies before I got her. She just turned 21, and I, wow. and I figure it's now or never. She's an American saddlebred with a good bone. And then uh, follow-up, I was looking at this jack and liked his looks, but I need to go local in Arizona area to keep costs down. Prefer light, solid color jack. I'm in Prescott, Chino Valley area. Um, Steve, any comments about uh, Susan's situation? Well, absolutely. Folks, don't, don't do a live cover. In other words, don't take your mare to a jack and do live cover. It can be quite traumatic. Some of these jacks, uh, if a mare uh, does something to excite them, they can, they can be pretty tough. And so you've got to have a good breeder. AI, folks, AI your, your horses. That's the best way you get a 97% chance of having a live foal. And most of all these breeders, when they send you uh, your semen, 
you they give you a guarantee. Now, Randy Figgins just did this, Dave, and a, a good quality jack. And if Randy's on here now, hopefully he can give us the name of it. Yeah. And he had semen sent and had a vet come out and and bred the, bred his mares. There's two mares they wanted done. Folks, that's the best way to do it. Don't do live cover. It's It works a, a lot better on your mare uh, if you'll do AI work. Steve, next question. This one comes from Greg. I thought this was a great one to bring up. I'm looking at buying a saddle that was purchased from you back in 2005. Question mm-hmm. is, are there any differences in the saddle that you make today versus the saddles that you made back then? Thanks, Greg M. It depends on which saddle you're talking about. For the most part, no, there's no difference. I use the same tree on every single model. So if you're using if you're using a, a trail light, which is the corridor and leather, and you're using the uh, cowboy, they're the exact same tree. It just it's been changed as far as looks goes. Only thing I've done, folks, for the most part, is change it some of the looks by, wise. It's always the D rings are in their exact same place, and that's imperative because those D rings have to be just in the right place to keep the cinches right. Now, here's the next thing: always ask for the video. Don't do, folks. Listen, this is important, and I and I send you a video with every single saddle. I that's important because people will take and put the saddle on, or they'll make changes in my saddle. And then think, okay, by golly, uh, there I've got it the way I want it. No, no, no. Leave it alone. The way I've designed it is the way it's going to work. And Dave and I have got some videos and this sort of thing to uh, to show you that people will put off billets on. Don't do that. Use all four straps. They'll sew up the back. Don't do that. They'll leave the saddle the way I designed it, and you'll have almost 40 years of, of a happy mule. It's awesome. Yeah, we were out in Mesa and uh, someone said, I got one of your saddles, Steve, but it's causing, causing bumps on the uh, the back, causing real soreness on those three bumps on the tail end of the spine. Steve says, well, that's, that, that's not possible with mine because mine are not sewn together in the back. He goes, no, it's a Steve Edwards saddle. Pull, he pulled it out, set it up on the saddle tree. Steve walked over. He goes, yep, that's my saddle. But I did not do that. Someone had taken leather pulled it together in the back, sewn it up and was using that. And that what was caused that is what was causing the problem on this animal making it all tender. And so um, had to cut into there, cut off that leather. They actually had to do some more modifications to the saddle to get it back spread apart. But yeah, that's why we want you to send in pictures if you get a used saddle so that we can make sure that it is the way it's meant to be, uh, not the way someone modified it. Uh, Folks, Linda put a couple funny stories in there. So you can scroll back up on Facebook and read the stories that Linda sent. That's great. Um, Mary says, howdy from Arkansas. It's, oh, let's see. We already got to that one. Uh, Let's see. What about the one we passed over? What's that? We had one lady that we passed over. That was Linda. She got a a long story that she was just sharing her experience there. Uh, Randy, yeah. Randy is watching Steve. Randy says Genesis Farms, Bremen, Ohio. Candace Shower, her Jack onesie is the one we use. So Genesis Farms, Bremen, Ohio. Candace Shower, uh, her Jack onesie is the one that we used. There we are. Thanks, Randy. Appreciate that. So, Steve, what yeah. do we have coming up? It's a special engagement coming yeah. up now at the end of the month. Thursday, May 27th at 5 p.m. What's happening? Well, I got I got one of the lights of my life. She's it's amazing how God blessed me with her. Uh, but her name is Natalie, and I met her back when she was eight years old uh, in in, um, in Missouri. And you know, Dave, in the ranch world and cowboy world. We got we got hands that are natural that are good. When I say hands, that person is able to do about anything, and they do it with ease, with no trouble. As soon as they pick up on the lead rope, you know they know what they're doing. As soon as you put your hand on the saddle to get in, the saddle, you know who who knows what they're doing and who doesn't. 
That was the deal with Natalie. She, her dad <coughs> brought her to one of my clinics. And that kid had such a natural touch. It was incredible. Had a lady that had a problem with a mule. And I give her the lead rope. I said, Natalie, go over there and work with that mule. At eight years old. That's how confident I was with this kid. And she did absolutely incredible. Today, she's been competing uh, with at uh, different uh, shows and has actually been winning, beating horses, which is awesome. But she's also competed in a very, very unique uh, situation, Springfield, Missouri, and where they take mules that are basically untouched and they draw that number and then they get that mule. They don't know anything about it. And then they start that mule and they start training it. And then come September, they have the mule days there in Springerville. Now, that, here's the unique thing about it. Money goes toward veterans and soldiers and this sort of thing. It's a great program, but the unique thing about it, you see people take one from knowing nothing to up to where they do all kinds of stuff with them. Now, the unique thing about it, last year they had kids uh, that, that, that they started, before it was all adults. So then they started saying, okay, some of these kids said, we want to be trainers too, we want to demonstrate. So they started having programs and sure enough, Natalie got chose, uh, chose last year and she had a really nice meal. Well, this year she decided to do it again and they chose her again, which is pretty awesome. So I'm going to be at Springfield, Missouri uh, when this program comes up. But here's what's going to happen. When we we're going to be interviewing Natalie. What was the date, Dave? May 27th. It's a Thursday May. evening. Yeah, at five o'clock. And you'll get a chance to meet Natalie. You'll be able to hear me ask questions and do things. But uh, you talk about someone that naturally God gave this kid natural abilities to communicate with a mule and a donkey. I mean, it is incredible to see her do what she did. And so you all get a chance to meet her, and I'm very proud of her. She's pretty awesome. Uh, matter of fact, she's, uh, uh, she's looking for some mules uh, for us in Missouri so that Randy and I have uh, some good mules to work cattle with in, in the future. So... If any of you in Missouri got some mules to sell, uh, give me a holler. I, I want to talk with you. So, uh, friends, what you want to do is click the link in the comment section that I just put in there. It's a free event. If you can't attend live, we're doing it in the evening, so hopefully you can. But if you can't attend live, that's okay because we're going to be sending out a replay. And it we had a lot of fun uh, with uh, Bernie Harberts and his story. Uh, I think it was earlier this month or at the tail end of last month. Um, and uh, and so Nat is our second conversation with mule owners and um, just a lot of really great stories paired up with great information. Um, of course, what we do here every single week is, is a lot of information with a couple stories here or there. Uh, but what we've been doing with these uh, mule owner stories is it really is the story, the narrative, the adventure that they've been on. And then with some information and some best insights and best learnings weaved in there. So it's going to be a lot of fun. It's free. doesn't cost you anything but your time. And I can tell you uh, it will be well worth your time uh, if you enjoy Mules and Donkeys. If you don't, I don't know why you're here. Maybe someone's forcing you to be here. Hang out again. Maybe you'll come to love these animals just like the majority of us do. Steve, that's all we have for this week. Do you have anything you want to say before we're all done? No, we're good, buddy. Hey, Dave, I appreciate you so much. You do such a good job with this show. Everybody says, wow, that guy really knows what he's doing. And I said, yeah, he's really getting it. It's pretty cool. Thank See my you. new hat? This is, we've been doing a lot of helicopter training. Yeah. And the helicopter company give us all, all as firefighters, a new hat. So, hey, hey, hey. Got That's new pretty hat. cool. I like that. You want, okay, so before we're, before we're done, um, I'll tell you, so you, you don't know this about me. Um, so when I was a so I'm not that old, but I'm not that young. I'm one of those tweeners where I've got half of my foot into the internet world and half of my foot and the other foot in, uh, in the non-internet world, right? Like I grew up without the internet, but I also was pretty early on using it. So I'm one of those millennials. Um, 
when we didn't have the internet, I had a fascination with helicopters. Now, my dad was in the army and he was a helicopter pilot. He flew the Hueys in Vietnam, come down, wow. land in the jungles, drop wow. off the soldiers and take back off. And he has all wow. sorts of stories that he shared with wow. us. I'm sure they're the PG, PG-13 versions of the stories. But growing up, we would lay down. You know, me and my brother, probably four or five years old, we would lay down in our bed. We had a double bed that we shared and my dad would lay down in the middle and he would tell us stories about flying helicopters. Wow. I, I had a fascination wow. with helicopters and oh, I, I wanted to see them. Yeah. So I signed up, Steve, I signed up for a club. It was like $5 a month where they would send you pictures of helicopters, like postcard size pictures of helicopters every cool. single month. I probably had... 200 or 300 pictures of helicopters and on the back you would read all about that helicopter and I loved it. So it's on my bucket list to get to fly in a helicopter before, before the Lord takes me home. I want to fly in a helicopter. I have a very, very good friend who is a mule guy that I helped out a lot. Yeah. And, and he is in Texas. Remember that story? And he actually trains police officers and other, and other people in helicopters and has invited that? Susan and I for years, for a couple of years now, to come to Dallas, ride in these multi-million dollar helicopters. Wouldn't that be something? You know? That would be great. Yeah. I just, you just look at, there's just certain things. I, I'm sure for fo some folks it's mules, for other folks it's another hobby. For me, it was helicopters and I still love them. You just look at them, you're like, golly, that's amazing. Yeah. Well, training around them as I have, Dave, this past five years, I am I am awed. Uh, these these professional firefighters yeah. and um, and uh, and wildland firefighters, the you know I, I'm just a dink compared to these guys. You know, uh, they, it, it's amazing what they do. But we learn a lot. We fight fires. We've fought a lot of them already. But to be around these helicopters and know the things that we have to do to be safe and to keep them safe. I mean, we had some monster helicopters last year that sucked up water and went off yeah. and did the stuff. But to Dave, to see that helicopter over top of you and hear that. Yeah. It is incredible. And the brownout can be pretty tough, you know, where all the dust is going, you know? Yeah. But yeah, pretty incredible. But, uh, um, hmm, that makes me think. All right, we'll have to consider this, Dave. We'll figure something out. Folks, thank you for spending your afternoon with us. We really do appreciate it. Uh, every week we do this. So if you weren't able to catch the whole thing, you can go back and you can watch the replay, the parts that you missed. And then just come hang out with us again. It's uh, 3 o'clock uh, Pacific Daylight Time. Now, we're in Arizona, which means it's 3 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. But for those of you who are in Mountain Daylight Time, it's four o'clock your time. That whole light, day, that whole daylight savings thing just throws things off. But come hang out with us next week. Spend a little bit of time with us, and uh, hopefully you can get back out there, uh, gain the trust of your animal, and get some results. Steve, we'll see you next week. All right. All right, buddy. Thanks again, Dave. We love you, buddy. Take care. Thanks.